Shane Jones is planting trees and making waves. During an interview on TVNZ's Q&A programme on Sunday morning, he told his, he said he told his, quote, young, near-do-well nephews that there'll be no more sitting on the couch. Shane Jones has called it work for the doll. The response from the government and its supporters has been to add some nuance in their genuine work for a genuine wage, said Jacinda Ardern on Morning Report. Richard Wagstaff from the CTU said they don't support people being coerced to work for the doll, but they do support the creation of decent work options for people who are unemployed. Now, we wanted more opinions from the, north, from the North. Tomorrow we'll talk to young people themselves. Our reporter is currently there, but Mana Party leader, Hone Harawira, a former Taitokere MP who went to Parliament to achieve change for Māori, well, what does he think of what Shane Jones is saying, particularly because they're related and they have nephews in common? Yeah, la. He's, um, his mum and dad's place is about a kilometre away from my house, so we're quite closely related, and... Um, so, of course, all of his nephews are my nephews. And, uh, you know, I see them all the time. I went down to a tangi down down uh, East Coast last week uh, with Shane's son and, and another one of the nephews. So, you know, the relationships are ongoing. So he's described them as near-do-well nephs sitting on the couch doing nothing. <laughs> Is that how you not see them? Yeah, look, look, not all of them, John, but um, I, I made it plain, you know, for the last two or three elections as the mana leader, that I'm a great fan of community employment, that if the private sector's not ready to step up, then the government needs to step up by, by providing community employment projects to get the brothers off the couch. And that's how I talked about it. Shane, of course, is referring to our nephews, but I'm talking about men generally. I just want to see them get off the couch. And, and don't, like, you know, I hear the unions are complaining about, oh, it's got to be meaning for work and real work but they don't they don't live up here i live up here and i see boys doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing while their marais are suffering while schools are suffering while old people's homes could do with a bit of paint and a, and more lawns being mowed while schools could have fences fixed all that kind of stuff there's so much that can be done in terms of community work and all our kids need is the opportunity to get back into work once they do, they will challenge themselves. I'll say, hell, I can be better than this. I can do better than... And they themselves will start to look for big opportunities. So, you know, I'm a big fan of um, getting our kids back to work in the communities in which they live. You say getting our kids back to work. Shane Jones is talking about work for the doll. That's not what you're describing. You're describing jobs, aren't you? Uh, well, back in the day, John, and you remember, them, they used to have these project employment programs, PEPs where you got, you know, for about six months or maybe nine months, you get together a supervisor, you know, a builder of some sort, uh, some of the local boys that, that get some money um, for, like, paint, uh, for scrapers, uh, shovels and that for helping dig out drains and all that, and clean fence lines, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, 20, what would it have been? 30-odd years ago, John, huh. when I was running this trust I'm back on with now, we did a 15 marais on PEP projects. And who funded and, that? And you know, they... Eh? Who funded that? It was that? funded by the government. That was funded by the government under the PEP scheme. It was the Department of Labor back then. I guess it's WINS, MSD now, but the same structure was uh, used to get our people back to work. And then, you know, when the private sector picks up, you've got people who sniff work, who understand work, who are ready to work. But you just can't take a young man who doesn't even know what work is, because not only has he never seen work in his, his lifetime, neither have his parents, if he's got two parents living in the same house. So, you know, it's intergenerational now, and even grandparents, they haven't seen real work for a long, long time. So you have to try and get them engaged in the work that they understand, and that might just be around them on eye. It might be, if they're, if they're a young fellow and they've got kids at, at Kohanga or at preschool, they always need somebody to help out, you know, mowing the lawns, painting the fences. Well, it doesn't really matter what it is. Just get them back to work. Get so, them off the couch, back to work. So what are they doing now? Well, according to the stats, we've got more than 2,500 in the Taitukere sitting around doing nothing. Um, some of them, you know, causing some serious trouble. A lot of them just seriously depressed. They can't see a future for themselves. Uh, I just come from watching a play, actually called T 
together where uh, they were talking about depression and you know, a kid growing up and not respected by his father and then a father leaves, all that kind of stuff. It's very much the life of a lot of our young people and we have to give them something positive and we have to challenge ourselves to step outside the boundaries and, and like Shane says, get them off the bloody couch, get them to work. Now, I know that Shane's taken a bit of a kick up the backside about the work for the doll. It's a work really program I understand that Labour was talking about. It's a you know, if they're talking community employment, that's exactly the program I was talking about uh, you know, this at this election and at the last election. Community employment when unemployment uh, unemployment is high, community employment is the way to go to keep everybody engaged and to help rebuild your community, refresh your community. Make your community beautiful again. Right, you see, I listen to you saying this stuff, and you're not using yeah. the same incendiary language that Shane Jones uses. And I, I wonder if you're playing to different constituencies. I wonder if Shane Jones is playing to a New Zealand First constituency, and you're in fact playing to the Māori community in the north. In other words, when he talks, it sounds punitive. When you yeah. talk, it sounds things start to sound possible. They start to sound meaningful. They start to sound like they have a value. Yeah, well, Shane's always been a bit of a dick that way. <laughs> nah, nah, not really. Not really. Look, um, <clears throat> I, I don't really care who he's talking to, but um, even my wife, Hilda, I said, watch this. She watched Shane's um, Q&A interview. She said, I like that. I like that, getting the boys off the couch, keeping them challenged, making them move forward. I know how to wear a talking to us a short time ago.